Welcome, second week of August. I'm out and about again. This time I'm up in Payson, Arizona. Found a nice little RV park. It's simply called Payson RV Park and Campground. Really close to downtown, so check it out if you like camping. I think they have some spots for tents, but uh, mostly I'm seeing RVs. But anyway, looking at the real estate numbers this morning, and I'm just struck by how stuck we are. Uh, actually, the past couple weeks. Uh, inventory is climbing slightly because that low sales number is still low. We're still at 2,700 over a seven day moving average. And that's why I track it every day. I just put it on this spreadsheet that one of the viewers uh, criticized. He has his own spreadsheet. Yeah, well, wouldn't make any sense to do it on a yellow notepad, would it? So, <laughs> so. But then I can stay on top of the numbers. I mean, I pull numbers from Cromford Report and stuff, but I still like to look and see any little subtle changes. For example, last week, I think I saw a couple of videos that said that uh, canceled, uh, canceled listings exploded. And I went and looked and go, we're up about 100. <laughs> so um, it didn't explode in this market. Expires always spike at the end of the month, and they come back down. So what I'm saying is there's nothing earth shattering going on in the market right now. Homes between 300 and 400,000 are moving at a actually pretty good clip. The only problem is the majority of them are up in Sun City, the 55 and over community, or down in Arizona City, south of Phoenix by quite a bit. And the ones that do come up available closer to the valley get scooped up very fast, and especially by investors. There's still a lot of investor traffic out there. The big institutional guys are kind of packing their bags and going to other states, but there's still a lot of individual guys looking to find a deal. One of the deals that we're trying to find is offer pad and open door, but they're a bit of a challenge. Um, I read their quarterly statement on open door, and they clearly said they want to unload this inventory in the third quarter. That's why you see incentives to close by the end of September. And the incentives are $1,000 to you for closing cost credit and $3,500 commission bonus to real estate agents to bring them a buyer to close by the end of September. That was kind of a tricky little move they made because they also lowered the, instead of paying 2.5% to the buyer's agent, they're paying 2.25. So they whittled that down a little bit and added a bonus. And that's okay. As far as bonuses for me though, um, they don't make me feel very comfortable in that I don't ever want to be accused of saying well he only showed me that house because he he got a higher commission on it because we get pounded about that all the time anyway we get accused of of wanting you to pay more for the house so we can get a higher commission and all of that's just nothing but urban myth um, and so that's why on that agent commission I'm just going to credit it back to you if you use me to get a one of those homes that's offering that uh, credit, whether it be open door, offer pad, or an individual seller, I'm just going to turn around and credit it back to you for your closing costs. I just think that's cleaner and it's a benefit for you. If they're willing to pay a bonus, then the bonus should go to you. Now, the market is muddling along. Um, it's kind of in a holding pattern from what I can see right now. So that, that makes people say, I saw something this morning that said um, sales actually spiked up last week unexpectedly. Well, I'm looking at it. I'm tracking it every, every day. Maybe it did in Cleveland, but it didn't here in Arizona. We were actually 2,600 last week. This week we're 2,700. So it didn't spike up here. Um, everybody, when the market starts to turn like it is now, um, people look for anything, any glimmer of hope. Um, sales went up, inventory starting to go down, inventory is leveling off. You just have to watch it and see what the long term is. Um, you know, buy real estate for the long term. Um, don't buy it for the short play unless you're a flipper. Now flippers are trying to turn their homes as quick as they can now too. They tend to pay a little higher interest rate than you and I can get in the market because they use uh, hard money lenders. So they want to get out from underneath it. And uh, the market, while it feels like it's a buyer's market right now, it's not there yet. We're getting closer. And by that, I mean we're seeing asking prices coming down. We're seeing some concessions. But buyers don't hold all the cards yet. 
getting closer. I don't know how fast it's going to take to get there, but you know, we got news coming up this week with uh, the CPI, and if the CPI number comes in too hot, that's just going to confirm that the Fed is going to continue to clamp down on rates to uh, tamp down on this economic activity. <coughs> Excuse me, too much money chasing too few goods. And uh, I think they're going to clamp down anyway, regardless of what this number comes out to, because they have to. It's going to be hot. They know it. Um, so they're going to go at least 75 to 100 bonus basis points they call it and that'll make its way into the into the mortgage-backed securities and you'll see higher rates right now you're not seeing higher rates uh, but uh, after that report comes out who knows uh, I don't see it spiking rates up but uh, that's kind of out of my sandbox so I try not to make too many bold predictions on that but I think the volatility is going to remain all the way through the summer here and as we get through the summer uh, interest rates, I think you're, we're going to see them go up, down, up, down, and they may go up and hold um, if the Fed keeps hitting us with 75 basis points every time they meet. So that's a number to watch. Uh, the other number I pointed out the other day in a video, and that's that uh, CMI number, that index on demand and supply. As those numbers start to merge and then start to separate, if supply is higher than demand, that's when prices come down. The other development to watch is going to be next quarter. Zillow and Open Door have an operating agreement now, which I find very interesting. You've got two companies that are notorious for overpaying for houses and selling them at a loss, but they're going to merge and it's going to be a lot better. So um, they've got deep pockets. From what I see, they're trying to make it seamless for you. They're going to have homes that are available that you see on Zillow, and you can use Open Door to buy them. And Open Door is going to have listings that are exclusively only on Open Door. And their hope is that you're going to be enticed to buy that house, use their title company, and use their financing. And they say it's all going to be seamless because it's in one, one spot. So visually, when you're looking at the site, it looks really easy. But you can do that now anyway. You can see a home and you're already talking with the lender. And I don't know. I, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical that they're going to be able to take something and make it that seamless from two companies that have really been messing up lately. I'll give an example. House and Chandler I saw this morning. They bought it. They paid $568,000 for it. It was a three-bedroom, two-bath home. I don't think it was over 1,700 square feet. There was nothing spectacular about this house. 568. But that's okay. We're selling it for 425. Really? And 425 looks overpriced to me when I look at that home. What in God's name made them pay 578? 578, I think, was the price. These are the guys that are going to make the buying and selling process seamless for you. 